What's going on smart people? Tomorrow is my final exam for first semester graduate quantum mechanics and I figured for today's video I talk about what it's going to be on. My professor actually put out this study guide that has the list of topics we should all be comfortable with. What made it really helpful is he also put homework problems that are associated with that topic. That way we can go straight to it and revise and see if we have a good idea of what that topic is and how to solve those kinds of problems. Let's actually get into the topics. The first one, translate and express states, wave functions, operators, and coordinate representation and momentum representations of Fourier transform. There's always the same trick to these kinds of problems. It's always inserting completeness relation to change into the different representation. As long as you know how to do that, it's, it's really easy. Solve simple one-dimensional eigenproblems of the Hamiltonian related to the in finite square well, so both, and the delta function potential. That's also really easy. Apply techniques of the harmonic oscillator, lowering and raising operators, energy eigenstates of the harmonic oscillator, number operators, etc. Uh, this is pretty simple stuff, except for our professors definitely found a way to make these problems more challenging by giving us like a Hamiltonian that corresponds to a shifted delta function potential. Well, we got that. I thought that that was pretty tricky. Next is angular momentum. Work with spin one half or spin one problems and the uh, angular momentum algebra, ladder operators. We haven't gotten too far in angular momentum. That's actually what our last lecture was covering. So we didn't get to the to the juicy stuff like the Klebsch-Gordon coefficients and addition of angular momentum. So all this really can be, I'm assuming, is like spin matrices and maybe commutators of of angular momentum, or maybe there's something I'm forgetting. But yeah. Calculate expectation values and uncertainties. Distinguish between amplitudes and probabilities. Calculate probabilities to measure certain eigenvalue of an operator. Uh, and the last one is apply the time evolution operator um, in the Schrodinger and Heisenberg picture. That's probably one of the only things that I didn't see in undergrad. All of the other topics that I've just covered is stuff that you see in undergraduate quantum mechanics. But our professors definitely found a way to ask much more in-depth versions of these types of questions. So it's a little bit misleading because these problems are hard. For example, he really likes uh, proof-based problems. So where he'll give you some problem relating to something like this. And it will be proof by induction that such and such, which is normally pretty easy to do. But it's different. That's normally not a way that you approach problems in undergraduate quantum. Another example is, I remember in undergrad, we might be given some state of a system and then asked to calculate like the expectation value of some operator. And it would be as simple as well, sandwiching the operator between the states. But here, it might be something like, here's the state, but it's in the wrong basis. So be comfortable with your linear algebra and changing the basis. Or it might be something like, here was what the state was, but then we made all these measurements. Now calculate what the probability is to measure it in this state if it's a mixed state. So it's like it, little complications like that. It's not much harder than quantum in undergrad, but it is a little bit different. I think next semester is when the difference between undergrad and grad will become much more apparent, at least for an outsider looking in. I can definitely tell the difference between what I learned last year in undergrad and what I'm learning this year, but at face value, just talking about it, it doesn't sound that different because the topics really are very similar. But next semester, we'll be able to flex a little bit harder in grad quantum because there's so many more topics that you can get into with still without getting into like relativistic quantum. You can go into like spherical tensor operators, different types of scattering, uh, path integrals if you really wanted to. All of this stuff is still regular old quantum but it's stuff that's probably skipped over in undergrad. So that's um, that might be new territory. I'm, lo I'm looking forward to that. But I'm gonna get to studying for quantum mechanics. It is currently 12 p.m. I have exactly 22 hours before my final. Let's get to it. Let me know in the comments section, what is something in quantum mechanics that you have a hard time understanding? That could potentially be a fun video to make on whatever you guys have to say. We'll see how it goes. So let me know in the comments section and I'll see you guys there.